Uh, today's Federal Reserve minutes showing no consensus among Federal Reserve officials on when to actually begin that slowdown of the stimulus, with some FOMC members suggesting tapering could start as early as next month. That was probably what caused the market sell-off. That seemingly was not in sync with Fed Chief Ben Bernanke telling Congress this morning that the economy still needs stimulus uh, to help the recovery, and tapering might begin in a few months. Joining us to make sense of it all exclusively is renowned Fed critic Jim Grant of Grant's Interest Rate Observer. Jim, good to have you on the program as Thank always. Thank you, Maria. Did you hear anything new today no. from Bernanke and company? Uh, economists proverbially have more than two hands. The Fed seem to have six or eight. Uh, many, many uh, 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 shadings of opinion, uh, airing of potentials and possibilities. I don't think there's much new. But I mean, and that scares me that there's so much division. Well, yes, the Fed. and you know what else is scary is that we seem to be so Fed centric. Since right. when is a central bank the principal fundamental in the financial markets or in the economy? Everything is everything really ride on the syntax and the judgment and the let's, let's be frank, the guesswork of these well-intended scholarly people. Well, I thought it was really interesting when first, you know, in his statement, it appeared or suggested as if we were here infinity. You know, yeah. QE is going to continue even through 2015. It felt like that's what the investor community and the traders down here thought. But then in an answer to a question, he said, well, sure, it's all about the data. We could start with in as little as two months. That's a stark contrast, and that obviously caused havoc in the market. Yeah. Well, uh, it's about some very, very questionable data that are often revised substantially after the fact. If, the, if what the Fed is doing is steering by economic statistics, just how good are the first pass of these statistics? Uh, national income data are better than they were, but they are revised over the course of years and indeed decades. Again, this gets back to the Fed as uh, this kind of uh, central planning agency masking as a central bank. Does it really know, you know, what is the proper level of measured inflation? Can we, in fact, measure inflation? So um, the Fed concentrates on, on an index it chooses. What about the distortions it has wrought in the financial markets? It's another kind of inflation, surely. You know, if you look, look no further than the New York Stock Exchange, there's a company called Great Northern Iron, GNI, that is trading a dividend yield of 13%. Now, the management tells you this company is going out of business in 2015. It's a trust, and by law, by the, by the details of trust, it goes out of business in 2015. You get back perhaps half of the current share price. You're positively going to lose money, right. but people look at the 13% yield, they have to buy it. And they just buy but it. this is just one example of, of, of dozens and dozens of examples of people scra scrounging around for yield in this very, very desolate interest rate world. In the backdrop, in terms of the fundamental story on the economy, yeah. if the Federal Reserve were not buying these $85 billion in bonds every month, what do you think the economy would look like? I mean, do you see an impact from the Fed action? Well, we sure, of course, the Fed, the Fed has a definite impact. It may not be the one they intend, but I would, I would ask the question this way. Is this thing called the price mechanism, Adam Smith's invisible hand, which got us this far in American economic history? Since when did the invisible hand become, become the second best thing in the Fed's judgment, this judgment of, again, well-intended, scholarly, but ever so fallible people, when did that become the first best thing? That is the question we have to ask. What about capitalism? Right. And, and I'm in favor of it, Bruno. I, I know you are. So when, when would you expect, and I know this is the million-dollar question, but when would you expect that the Fed starts to step away? I don't know that we know anything more than we have after today's minute. Not only don't I know, but more importantly, they don't know. Um, that's I, the big right, question right. and but the big it, it, issue. You're right. I, I'd say later rather than sooner, but that's 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 a guess. Yeah, you know, it's a guess. Have you ever seen this kind of division within the Fed? Sure. Do you think this is yes? Okay. This, I mean, the, the, the chairman is a is a is a potent figure in the Fed, and you notice the the vote only after George dissented in May. Uh, uh, so I, you know, it seems to me it's, it, this is business as usual, the Fed. They have an atlas complex. They are not going to let the measured rate of inflation get too low. By the way, when did that happen? Right. You can't have the, okay. They're not going to let the inflation rate get too low. They are going to um, do their all to make sure that the unemployment rate is lower, bearing in mind, of course, the labor participation rate. These are economists. Economists, mind you, Maria, this is frightening. Yeah. A PhD economists are running this country. It appears that way. <laughs> You're right. Let, let, me, let me ask you about... In 
in the meantime, in an investment strategy, I mean, knowing that this is what is the case, that the Federal Reserve is providing this stimulus, do I always want to look at a market sell-off and say, hey, i got to buy on the dip? No, no, but you have to look at individual values. Let me give you an example from the world of bonds and stocks. Apple, right? Yeah. Familiar name? Apple sold some bonds recently. All-time, all-time low, 2.4% coupon. Now Huge it's, success. Oh, right. Huge success, right? Couldn't get enough of it, right? Yeah. Okay, 10-year security, yielding a little bit less than the dividend yield on Apple. Now, Apple has a current free cash flow yield of about 11%, okay? If you assume the share price does nothing over the course of these 10 years when the bond lives, 10 years of steady share price, and the free cash flow accumulates at only half the rate of the past fabulous five years, at the end of the 10 years, the common's going to have a free cash flow yield like 145%. 145. So and with the bondholders, we get their money back. Uh -huh. That's the value proposition. So it seems to me this is a it's a it's a Fed centric world and it is a bond, you know, obsessed world. Everyone wants income and they're doing crazy things to get it. Where would you find income right now? Would you have would you have bought into that Apple bond? No, <laughs> but I think it's an excellent short sale candidate. I think, uh, well, notice, please, that, that bonds the world over seemingly are beginning to move upward in yield and downward in price, at least over the past three or four weeks. Do you look at gold as a commodity or a hedge? It's money. But All right, it, it's just money. But, but no, but, but it certainly is a hedge against uh, unscripted outcomes of you know, monetary affairs. It is, you know, it is, it is an investment in the tendency of of government issued paper money to depreciate in value. That's it's an investment in that. Now it's it's possible of course these guys get it right and a miracle in history occurs and this particular brand of paper money excels and holds its value. That's possible. Mm -hmm. It's a probabilistic world. However, it seems to me more likely is that this this experiment, this unprecedented experiment in the materialization of digital currency comes a cropper. In some way, we can't know. It might be inflation. It might be the opposite. It might be a credit disaster or something. However, there's a possibility, it seems to me, that this does not work out. And in that setting, one would want to own gold, I think. Mm -hmm. All right. Yeah, so I guess in that, in, in that world, you don't like bitcoins. <laughs> not like bitcoins. <laughs> Jim Grant. No, behind, there's even less behind them. There is, they haven't gotten the U.S. U.S. Navy behind them. It's <laughs> good to have you on the program, okay, as you. always, Jim. Always wonderful to get Jim Grant's insights, uh, certainly on Fed Day.